<laughs> well, two things for me to be happy about. Number one, my partner is doing well. His surgery was successful. He just arrived today from the hospital. Thank you guys so much for your wonderful prayers and your dedication. Thank you so much. The prayers helped. Universal prayer. There's a lot to be said about the universal prayer now. And, you know, I don't think he, you know, appreciated it because he's a private person, you know. Not a personal thing, just a Scorpio thing. <laughs> well, I'm sorry for the delay, but of course, because we had that health scare situation, you know. <clears throat> and then I was out of town. I was in D.C. Mm. Uh, on business, of course. And I met this wonderful, lovely, lovely, lovely uh, couple. They they came for a reading. They're from D.C. They flew in for a reading. And I continue. And, uh, I flew out there to continue the sessions with them. Spent a wonderful time with them in Georgetown. You know, it's a, it's a homecoming. So it was wonderful. I got myself some new jewelry. I bought myself a, some outfits and got given some gifts too. So, and I met a couple of you while I was in DC and I read a couple of you down there. I met this lovely woman, half Puerto Rican, half, I believe, Ecuadorian, you know, <laughs> with the cutest, cutest, cutest little. Uh, Tony, I think she did a video of me when I was doing the reading. She needs to call me back because we haven't finished. We only gave her 20 minutes. So, um, I hope you're liking the series on The Ascendant. I know I went technical in the first introduction. But, like I said, I want to give an explanation scientifically as to how the planets influence us. And it's not that we, remember, we got seven bodies to us. This body, the physical body, is just one of six more bodies that we have. This one is the seventh body. Remember, we have the uh, ethereal body, the casual body, the astral body, the emotional body, the etheric double, the the, the uh, emotional body, and of course, the physical body. The emotional and etheric or the casual body deal with the etheric region of the concrete and abstract and, and non-abstract worlds. The, uh, the astral world, which is immediately above the physical world, is where the action goes on. That affects um, humanity and, uh, and uh, all the other kingdoms that coexist with us, you know, the mineral kingdom, the uh, animal, the insects, and then of course, uh, my favorite, the plant kingdom. So understand that these um, are kingdoms, and the human kingdom, of course, right? Uh, the human, animal, mineral, the phyla, which is the world of insects, and plants. These are the five kingdoms that exist here on our planet. And the astral world, along with the casual world, and the physical world, along with the etheric body, or what they call the etheric double. These are different body layers. If you go to my website, I talk in detail about it in the People's Astrology, okay? So there are many layers to us. When I leave my body and I travel, space travel, to my astral body, that's one body. When I leave, I can see my physical body in the bed. I go, bye, Fernando, see you later. I leave the personality behind, and the ego leaves. You know? So there are many bodies. We do this when we go to sleep. We just don't remember when we wake up because, again, the ego is not allowed to remember unless you are very awakened and very adept. If you have your third eye open, sufficiently open, you can, or you get occult training. Like if you take my classes, you can learn how to do this. You know? And of course, not everyone that asks for my classes do I give them the classes. Because you know you, you you have to be sure that you're in the right state of mind for these classes. These are advanced teachings, you know. And like they say, if the student is ready, the teacher will appear. 
So now we're going to continue talking about the cardinal signs, the movers and the shakers. But first, let me have my a ginger pineapple martini. Mmm, doesn't this taste good just to look at it? And it's good for the last drop. Can I take that drop? <laughs> Ooh. Well, I have a cause to celebrate. Uh, my partner is out of danger, like I said. And, uh, put that. and now I can continue to do my work. Um, I got a few of you there that I have to do readings. And, and, and the, read, the birth chart is 36 hours long. When you get a birth chart from me, it's not just two hours. It's 36 hours. So it's broken down into one, two hours a week or two hours a day or two hours every other hour. Depends on how you want it. So many of you have been charted already. And many of you have given two hours. Some of you have given four hours. I'm tallying the hours I'm giving you guys. Okay? And this week, I want to go and start doing the reading schedule here. On schedule. I have um, uh, Stacy Davis. I have Toby Lee. Sarah Mupa. Uh, Teresa. Jean. Debbie Campbell, Debbie Campbell, uh, I need to hear from you, Debbie, the lawyer from L.A., lovely woman, love her, I need to hear from her, um, some people have paid for readings, but I have not heard from them, um, uh, I have a couple of people here that still need uh, Terrence, whom I uh, also uh, charted uh, this weekend in D.C., uh, Kudu, the Libra. So there's a couple of you out there. I didn't forget y'all. You already got your initial two hours. Now call me to book the next session. Remember, it's 36 hours. We can't do it right away because you need time to reflect on what we've talked about in our first two-hour sessions. Okay? And for those of you who would like a birth chart consultation, there's a lot of you who have been calling me and writing me on, on, on Gmail. I didn't forget about you guys. It's just that there's a waiting list. So I'm trying to... And you don't want to deal with another astrologer but me, right? So I'm I'm going I'm doing real quick real quick real quick. So I'm going to be doing a lot of videos. You said do two or three videos a day because it's about two four hours of work to do at least two or three videos. But this time I'm I'm changing my sleeping habits. I'm going to bed uh, like around midnight, one o'clock in the morning. I'm already getting ready to go to bed so I can get up in the morning and do a full schedule of videos because. Um, I need to do that now. Since now I have a, a, whole, a whole list of people to chart. You know, I have to be able to devise the time wisely. So please be patient with me as I and my staff go through this transition as my organization, the People's Astrologer to YouTube, begins to grow and grow. I'm having this issue now at 26,000. Imagine if I get 100,000 or a million. You know, so I, be, I become less accessible as my numbers increase. So guys, take advantage now, because I'll will be i I'll be a commodity in people's households because you won't be able to reach me. It'll be impossible then. So let's do this now while it's at its infancy. Okay. Thank you so much for your um, donations. Thank you. Uh, let us... Go into. I'm brief from Mama Sushi, the one you talk to. Oh, okay. okay. I'm getting so many other people. Ooh. Oh, God, we're running into eight minutes. Okay, so we're going to have to make up for those eight minutes, okay? All right. Uh, we are going to. Let's see. Let me check what we did okay i gotta kind of like orient myself i remember doing libra cardinal air aries and the ascendant cardinal fire okay okay let me just take a quick look how that went oh my god i have over 112 comments and Cardinal Air, I have not looked at them because I was away in the weekend at DC and then my brother, my you know, partner was in the hospital. So I'm going to read your comments today, okay? I'm going to read your comments today. 
and, and see what the feedback was, okay? Uh, in the meantime, let me, before I move forward, let me just discuss uh, some of the things about the rising sign that I probably didn't make clear. Understand that the rising sign is the mask. Oh, yeah, you know when that be hit? You know when that be hit? <laughs> when you, um, when the, the ascendant or the rising sign, remember, it's, it's a portal. Remember, I, gave, I did the diagram, right? Should I do it? Should I do it? No, no. I don't want it to eat up from the time. Uh, the ascendant, remember, is the horizon that crosses the ecliptic and the intersection between the, the three great circles, right? Which is the horizon or the equator, the prime vertical or, 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 or the meridian, the prime meridian, right? The equator, the horizon, the prime vertical, or the prime meridian. These are the three great circles of astrology. They intersect each other along with the intersections of the moon between the solar ecliptic and the rotational horizon of our planet. When these three circles meet and the moon cuts through these circles, it cuts from one point of the earth, and remember, it's a circle, and it cuts to the other point. What happens here happens over here. So the moon passing through the earth and through the moon's uh, ecliptical path, that determines the north and south nodes of the moon. Rahu and Ketu. Okay? The moon's intersecting of these three great circles from one end of the circle to the other end of the circle. Because remember, we have the polarity of both. That defines the nodal axis. Okay? This is also important to discuss. Because the nodal axis represents our past. It represents what we've been doing in the soul's journey to its eons and its constellations and planetary systems and galaxies and God knows where are the worlds that is outside of our consciousness. So understand that the north and south nodes of the moon are in tandem with the ascendant and the descendant and also the vertex, the eastern point. Another great intersection by these three great concentric circles. All of these things help define the ascendant mathematically and talking as far as the genetic um, grid of our planet. When you have uh, the ascendant, you have personality. How you look, how you dress. You've all seen me in different disguises. I mean, that's, I, that's part of the uh, design of, of my organization in discussing and decoding astrology. I understand that these things that I'm wearing, that's the mask. The real me is when I'm fully naked with no clothes. Now you're looking at the real me, the ego, and hints of the soul in there. But when I put on a garment... I become a different person. I become a, an image. An image that could be plastic or an image that could be real. The ascendant awards both. We are showing you what we want you to see and hiding what we don't want you to see. That hiding is the 12th house which precedes the ascendant. And the ascendant, I'm, I'm out. In the 12th house, I'm like this. The 12th house represents that part of us which we hide from ourselves and from others. So understand that the ascendant is important because it is... How can I put it? Oh, this is a great analogy. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wait. <laughs> Okay, the ascendant is like having different shades of sunglasses. You have one sunglass which is dark, 
You have another one that's blue. You have another one that's colorless, see-through. You have some that are prescribed. You have some that are not prescribed. You have small ones, square ones, feminine ones, masculine ones. The same, same thing we has. You have, you know, a fedora, or you have a, 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 a kufu, you know. These are, they're not really you, they're part of you, but it's not, it's not the totality of you. Okay? So, the ascendant is more, is more like a, it's an image, but it's not the real you. At least not in the context that all that seen represents you. All that we see when we see each other on the street and see that, we see parts of ourselves, not all of it. The ascendant, remember, only shows what we want you to know. And then the rest is relegated to the 12th house. That part, if you want to know somebody, don't look at the ascendant. Look to the 12th house. That's the real person that they're hiding. The, the ascendant is the mask. And it's, the, um, it's our first line of defense. Either against the world or even against ourselves. When we rebel, and like you have the goth and the punk cry and the people that color their hair, that's a rebellion against self, which then reflects rebellion against society. If we're dealing with the young folks, uh, more serious goths and occultists that are in secular organizations that pretend an image are far more serious than those who are just still functioning on a basic personality level, right? So, and I had to say that because um, when you put it in that context, the ascendant is not as important as the sun sign, which defines your destiny. And it's not as, um, and, uh, in astrology, especially when I was raised as a student of astrology, before I became a professional, we were taught that the ascendant represents the soul. And I'm like, you know, I'm not going to argue with ancient, thousands of years of ancient wisdom, right? But as I got older, when my professors failed to tell me, or as, as when we were students back in the 80s, as we were being trained to be astrologers, that we were not taught that astrology, along with everything else, evolves. Libra and the Ascendant, when I was in the 80s, has become much more different than Libra and the Ascendant now. 30, 40 years later. Because we have different generations of, of souls being born. And as we are moving into a new age and living Pisces, the definitions of the sons of the Zodiac will change also in according to the new theme of the Aquarian age. So astrology or the asteroid or the astrological Zodiac with the planets and the signs of the Zodiac, they're not going to stay the same as time evolves and progresses. And there might be more signs instead of just 12. Or it might be reduced to six or three. You know, the universe is contracting and expanding. Right now it's expanding farther, farther and larger than material scientists can understand. But as occultists and as, and as shamans, we know why that's happening. And we also know why the scientists are not getting it. But let's let them figure it out. We will keep our secrets to ourselves. We know why the universe is expanding. And we know what's causing it. And science doesn't have a clue. But we as shamans, we know. So, I had to say that because I don't want you to... Uh, the reality is that the ascendant represents the personality in the first 30 years of life. What governs personality and what governs your life on a mundane level does not happen by the sun sign. It happens by the moon sign. So if you are, let's say, like me, I'm 52 years old. I just turned 52 uh, a few weeks ago, right? And the 19th. I'm 52. But the first 40 years of my life, as it is with everybody, because I know some of you might skip this and go right into the um, description of the ascendant. If you do, I hope you go back to what I'm saying. Everything that I say that comes out of my mouth, whether it's related to the video at hand at the moment or not, is valuable. It's important. For those of you who skip this, you have to be young 
to not to appreciate what I'm trying to tell you in these gems of moments I've given you this information. Aside from the video I hand that I'm supposed to be doing today, I understand that astrology evolves over time. So what started out as the personality, which is the ascendant, becomes now the agency of evolution of the soul. So the ascendant, which is the personality, eventually becomes the seed of the soul. Once the ego is transformed, see? But that doesn't happen with everybody, or at the same time with everybody. This is the level of evolution that determines where we're at in our evolution as a whole. Right? You might have Libra on the ascendant, but you're a different Libra on the ascendant than I am a different Libra on the ascendant. I'm more evolved and more advanced because I've been on the planet far longer than that person. So that person's use of the writing sign of Libra may not be exactly as how I use it. I have more tenure. And that right there gives an explanation as to why science are not all the same. It's not that the signs are different. The signs are the same because it is a, a hologram. It is a template. What's different is how the soul enters and uses that ascendant, depending on its history and depending on how much tenure that soul has on the planet. That's going to determine how you use or come across to the ascendant. That's why you have people that are highly evolved and those who are less evolved. That right there should give you an explanation, at least a little bit, as to why there's so much complexity when it comes to the human condition. Not all of us are in the same platform of evolution. We're all in different levels of evolution in one platform. That's going to learn for more variety, right? With the good and the bad and a little bit of the ugly. Now, having said that and set that tone, we can begin with the mystical sign of the feminine mystique, which is cardinal water, active water, cancer. All right. Cancer is a uh, um, cancer sun. Cancer is sun. Ooh. Ooh. And that ain't the music. That's just a shudder as to how I'm going to begin this series. Let's put, let's bring a good Tito point to music for that. One that's more sultry. Oh, who am I kidding? I'm going to put the same one I always put because it's jumpy. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Let's begin. Cancer. Again, and this is why I had to take time to discuss this. Um, let me re go back real quick about Aries. And then I'm going to go real quick about Libra and then proceed with Cancer. And it's all connected because it's the cardinality of, of, of the signs, which define the four cardinal points. The spokes, which holds the rest of the zodiac together. The reason why we have a wheel is because we have a four spokes, right? You know what? Damn. I have to uh, do a visual, because I think if I do that, it will be better understood.
I, I want to buy this. You have to understand that. Okay, yes, it looks cute. Then you got the people can see it, but now it's in the way. Um, the four cardinal points, right? Uh, Capricorn, Aries, Libra, Cancer. Okay, the four cardinal points, the movers and shakers of the zodiac. But why are they the movers and shakers? Because you do this. Huh? So now that's the zodiac. Okay, hold on one second. I'm getting a call. If I don't answer, yes, hello. Hi, Camille. I'm in the middle of, of the video. I'm in the air. Can I call you back? Everybody say hello to Camille. Camille, say hello. You're on the air. Hi, Hi everyone. I'll call you back as soon as I'm done with the video. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. Understand. This is the Zodiac right here. Capricorn. Aries is in charge of Taurus. And Gemini. Cancer is in charge of Leo and Virgo. Libra is in charge of Scorpio and Sagittarius. And Capricorn is in charge of Aquarius and Pisces. There you have the whole Zodiac. These are the gatekeepers that guard the fixed signs and the mutable signs. Okay? And that's why they are called movers and shakers. They move the Zodiac wheel and they shake things up when things become stagnant. This is the essence of the cardinal signs. Aries, Libra, Cancer, the Devil, Capricorn. Now, but more than just being a mover and a shaker, they also set the tone for the pace of life and how life unfolds. With Aries speeding up things. And Libra, it's cardinal opposite. Slowing things down and causing a balance. Don't go too fast, Aries. Just, you know, don't burn us with your fire. But let us experience the warmth of its heat. Libra, don't be too harsh. Don't be too polarized. Give a shit. Move. Get from the airy side of you and push forward without being pretentious and phony, Libra. Cancer. You are the guardian of the night. For the sun is below the nadar in Cancer. It represents darkness. The terrible mother, Hecate, Lilith. These are all feminine dark symbols attributed to cancer. People say that I'm too hard on Libra. Well, let me go hard on cancer. Cancer is the destroyer. Cancer is the terrible mother who devours her own children. If you know the mythology of cancer. She's, um... Uh, she's Kali with the different hands. Kali Ma, Shukti Day. Oh, she could be Vishnu. She creates and destroys at will. She determines the great flood.
that took place in this planet's history was caused by the gods of cancer, whom decided that, uh, that the world should be destroyed and reborn again. Cancer is probably one of the most terrifying of the cardinal signs because it promotes life. It is the great womb, but it's also the great furnace of Hades. Life and death, these principles are held by the cardinality of air, fire, earth, and water. Cancer being the queen of life and of creation. For all of life began in the water. And from the water, like Darwinism says, we move from the water to, to land. And now look at this. Thank you, Cancer. Cancer is the seat of foundation. Foundation where we move to create. Not only do we create when we have babies, you know, as the procreative forces are directed downward to Scorpio, the sexual organs, and we produce babies. This procreative force can be used not just to produce babies, but to produce ideas, to produce projects, to produce organizations, conglomerate companies. The germinal foundation of cancer is not that it can give birth to physicality. That's the least of cancer's um, manifestation. There is birthing and creation on every level of the cosmos. We only know of one, which is giving physical birth from, from a human being procreating. But trust me, there are many, 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 many ways of giving birth. And it's not always and always or exclusive to physicality. Understand this important fact about cancer. Uh, if you understand this about cancer, you understand that to be born with the moon in cancer or the sun in cancer or the ascendant in cancer is going to make you diabolically ambitious. Determined to make a name for yourself. To live in a life of luxury. You think Libra likes luxury and, and gets luxury? The taste and the appetite for such lavish and such wonderful sense of living that awards us the finer things of life, in life, all begins in cancer. It culminates in Libra. Which is why Libra is so showy and likes fine things and glamour and beauty and jewelry. Yes, but those instincts begins in cancer. Da, da, da. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, the, the, my Venus in Leo. I got my soul has to move. And when it does that, the energy just flows. Oh, he's supposed to be. <laughs> geniuses, these musicians, geniuses. They really know how to struck the core of the soul. And no better vehicle or medium does that than music. Thank you, Tito Puente. Thank you, Tito Rodriguez. Thank you, thank you Tito Rojas. And all you geniuses out there that make this world a better place. Mm. So, having said that, I can say that this ambition is because there's a, a sense of fear. A, a, sense, a fear of being poor, being broke, not being influential, not being able to take care of itself. These are powerful, powerful fears for cancer. And it's that terrible, terrible, powerful fear that makes cancer so dangerous in its ambitions. Hello, Corinne the Green. Everybody say hello to Corinne the Green. Um, the woman who is responsible for my success, Mrs. Green. Oh, hey. How are you? You're on the air. Okay, I'll call you back. 
<laughs> she's very shy. <laughs> Say hello to everybody to Mrs. Green. <laughs> okay. She's just checking up on me, checking out that I'm back to business, you know, since I was gone for a couple of days and there are people that church have to be done. So, you know, we're working overtime. So, under, so you understand that uh, cancer has, this is why the moon is the appropriate assignment for this beautiful cardinality of a sign. Because the moon is changeable. Remember, it has 28 different tinctures, which represent 28 different phases. The cancer person is moody and crabby, and, and, and they're known for that. But what you don't know, is that it is being governed by the, these 28 faces and 28 tinctures, which define 28 different kinds of moods. But if you don't know that, you're not going to understand the complexity of cancer. And you need to know this, or you're not going to understand the cancer woman or the cancer man, whether the moon, the sun, or the ascendant is, is prominent in the birth chart. You have to understand that even cancer doesn't understand its motivations. But cancer, I'm going to tell you, out of all the other signs of the zodiac, is governed by instinct. She moves inwardly by instinct. Instinct defines the motivation of cancer. Boca. Yo nunca besare tu boca. Cancer. Cardinal water. Active water. Okay, so having said that, let's go a little bit with appearances. Okay, appearances, you know, okay, like I had mentioned in Aries, the Aries person, uh, the physical characteristics of an Aries and the Ascendant, they have powerful bodies. Or powerful looking bodies. Remember, the ascendant is the mask. So, you, you know, all the bulging muscles all over the place might not be real. The person might be taking steroids. The person might be taking weight gainers. You know, when you go to the gym, I know. because I, I Look, look, look. Look. I got weight, I got get weight gainers, right? Because I'm going to the gym, right? After the devastation of HIV, and now that I no longer have it, it left my body in quite a condition. So now I got to rebuild the body. But understand that all of this aids the ascendant, the physical image. Oh, the beat. But it's not really you. What you is governed by the sun sign. The destiny, which is the soul. Everything else is transient. Okay? And we are done. I went 38 minutes. You can't complain. I would like to see some donations so I can go on to um, Capricorn.